Okay, in this uh, project number one, I want to discuss a cruise control system. The speed of the car should be controlled. Um, this first project works with a very, very um, approximated uh, process model, but sh can show many, many principles of typical controller design. So uh, I think here you can learn what is reference behavior, what is disturbance behavior, what is meant with uh, controller design, uh, what is meant with process analysis. So I think uh, this is a good way to show you in the first project um, system uh, which you can follow and hopefully easy understand. So um, we have in typical uh, uh, controller design five pr five steps five typical steps um, uh, typical steps yeah typical steps in controller design in controller design before you can design a controller you have first uh, define hardware so Think about what hardware is available. <clears throat> Second, uh, make a process analysis. Uh, third, then the, the uh, controller design appears. Then, uh, fourth, uh, analysis. A system closed loop system behavior and this uh, of closed loop behavior and finally very often a step called optimization is followed okay and this <coughs> We first start uh, our project with the hardware of our cruise control hardware. Um, first, assume we have just a simple car, simplified with a mass, and then we have, of course, four wheels. This car has a speed V that is. is physical value which we want to control and the influence to the speed is an internal value that we want to work with the power signal yeah p power of the motor <coughs> um, we assume that we have access to control the power uh, via an electronic control device so that we um, can send a signal to the motor which power we want actually uh, have to uh, to get our desired speed um, so we don't want to go deeper in, in the hardware because in this case yeah, the principles of control uh, just work with this simple uh, model um, the second step is before we can design a controller we have to know something about the dynamics of the process yeah? make a process analysis this can uh, normally be done uh, on at least two ways one way is a theoretical way look for physical values uh, for uh, the dynamics of the hardware, dynamics of the actuator, dynamics of the sensor, and so on, make a physical analysis, set up a signal block diagram, and then, uh, if possible, uh, reduce, simplify this block diagram, then you have a, a theoretical process model. That is one possibility to get a process model. Second is very often uh, look for an good um, appropriate measurement um, and in our case this measurement uh, <coughs> uh, yeah, could, could be uh, a step response measurement 
let's think about uh, what I want to have. First, um, you see our car should be simplified with a black box uh, model. And we want to use our signal block description and say, okay, there is a power input and a speed output. And yeah, the question is, uh, what is with this process model? Can, can we find a transfer function or differential equation or any other things to have knowledge about the process behavior? If yes, then is the next step. Uh, number three follows with the controller design. So, how can we find out the uh, dynamics, the dynamical model of my process? Uh, you know, you should know that the car industry works with very complicated uh, theoretical process models. Uh, they uh, have complete areas, many, many scientists working on this. Of course, we don't want to go too deep into details of dynamical behavior of car with gear and with uh, wheel drives and so on. Uh, we want to have a, a, simple, a very simple model. Um, so I decide for uh, a measurement of dynamics. Yeah? We want to have a step response measurement. How can this work? Step response means uh, we need a signal here, which is a step function. So we apply our t a power step, say starting with zero power, and then switch on the motor power to a constant value. In our case, we want to also deal with numbers, so we have very uh, concrete. Um, understanding of the hardware, uh, let's assume that we uh, apply a power step of 40 kilowatt. Uh, and then we want to, a kilowatt, then we want to uh, check what is the response of the speed. And then this, if this is a step function, then this will be the step response of my uh, car. Um, assume that we, of course, want to have zero initial conditions. That means we start with a standing car. Uh, and then we uh, apply a power. That means uh, we have a constant power, means an acceleration. And so in the first moment, the car increases the speed rather linearly. But the faster the car is, the more we have problems with uh, air friction. So, you know, if you have constant power to a car, there will be a final value somewhere uh, which uh, stops acceleration if you get a constant speed. Um, this uh, is, of course, fictive. Yes, of course, fictive. But, of course, you can do this. I, I in Some years ago, I have done this really with... Um, um, sensor and with uh, connections to the motor and uh, I have measured step response of a car in this way in, in expertise. So uh, this is really possible and uh, we can do this. And the question is what can I do with a measurement of the step response? If I want, really I want to have a simple process model and this is just not a process model that is a measurement of the model dynamics. Yes. Uh, but what we can do is the following. I can, yeah, uh, at first uh, do some some uh, numbers, add some numbers. In in my case, my car, uh, I want to have simple numbers. Uh, drives 100 km per hour after some time, and you know um, this is uh, looks like the step response of a simple PT1, and that is what I want to show you. Um, I uh, want to uh, identify this as a simple PT1 model and then I can identify a time constant which would be 10 seconds. Okay, so after 10 seconds I drive 63 kilometers per hour, after 20 seconds I drive say 82, after 30 seconds I'm within 5% of the 
kilometer drive 95 and so on. So this is a typical reaction of a simple PT1 model. This PT1 model contains then the physical uh, law in inertia, the Newton's law, and the uh, air friction. Yeah? The faster the speed, the higher the air friction force. So this just contains the two um, main influences on uh, this uh, dynamical behavior. Yeah? Uh, we assume that this could be a typical step response of my car. Uh, after, say, 30 seconds, I'm, I'm driving 100 kilometers per hour with, with nearly a yeah, constant final value. Um, we look into our uh, table workbook, page 16, uh, then uh, remember the row number 2. We have discussed the PT1 behavior. Uh, this is a model I want to have. I want to have a K and a T. And you see here the uh, step response looks very near to my uh, um, measured speed. Uh, the final value, the, fi ah, so the final value uh, contains information of K, and the tangent contains information of the time consent. And the time consent already I've mentioned should be six, uh, ten seconds. Uh, the question is, how large is a K? Uh, note that this is a unit step response. So the unit step response, input amplitude is 1, has a final value of K. But in our case, the uh, input amplitude is not 1, it's, it's P0, it's 40 k uh, kilowatts. So uh, the K of my system, uh, my model function should look like this, PT1. K divided by 1 plus PT. Time constant is defined. And K is final value of my step response is 100 kilometers per hour. Uh, divided by the input amplitude. Then K is the unit step response final value. Yeah? We divide just by with 40 kilowatt. Then you see we have a value of 100 divided by 40 is 2.5 uh, kilometer divided by kilowatt hour. That is the uh, K value, the DC gain of my car, we can say. Uh, and T is the time constant, 10 seconds. So with this both values, I know all about the, uh, in the first uh, approximation, very simple approximation, uh, I know all about the main behavior of my car. So we can close the process analysis and open now the next step, which is the controller design. The controller design means uh, first I uh, have to look for a type of a controller and after this I have to think about how to can find out the parameters of a controller. And in our case, we can say, uh, okay, we have a simplified signal block diagram of my system. The controller produced a signal for my motor. So we have a power output and we have a speed output of our system and we know, okay, this is my K and this is my T and a closed loop system has a negative feedback so we need also here a, a comparison with desired value and measured speed value and okay, this goes into the controller the controller produced in the power signal in this project in project one, um, I decide for uh, the type for the controller. This should be a PI. Now, of course, I could have started with a P controller or with a PID, but P controller has bad behavior. PID is not discussed yet, so uh, PI uh, is a good choice. You should know that in many, many millions of applications in the world, a simple PI controller does a job very well. And this is it what uh, I want to show you, uh, the behavior of this 
simple system with the PT1 process and the PI controller leads to a very good theoretical closed loop behavior. We want to discuss this in this chapter. Um, controller design means first type decision is done, PI. Second, parameter decision. Or selection. Yeah? We cannot say selection. You should know that here we have a KC value and a TN value of the controller. The controller is known, we have discussed this in the last in the previous chapter. The, con the controller is defined <coughs> with two uh, three parameters. And the transfer function looks like this. Now we have two unknowns, the KC and the TN is free choice. So uh, after decision of the type of the controller, we have to find out a good set, a good pair of KC TN to have a good behavior in this loop. And so KC is free, TN is free, and the controller design idea is find a method which throws out uh, appropriate values for KC and TN with the goal that the closed loop system is <coughs> well working. Um, some people start with uh, trial and error. Yeah, they don't want to have any mathematical behavior, uh, mathematical methods. They uh, change KC stepwise, they change TN stepwise, and make experiments and then find out uh, which pair is good. That is a trial error method works always, but it's very time consuming. So I want to show you a little bit faster method, which gives very quick results and we have a good uh, chance to uh, anal analyze the closed loop behavior because we have simple models. Yeah? This, uh, just si si single, a uh, first order system, first order system. You will see the closed loop system is also a first order system. So the discussion of the closed loop behavior, it works with uh, that uh, knowledge we have uh, gained in chapter 3.7 up to now. Okay, um, I want to show you the next step. The next step is uh, if we have a PI and a PT1 model, then uh, a good choice that the uh, result from uh, experiments, from uh, yeah, uh, experience in working with PI controllers, a good choice is if TN is set equal to the process time constant. If you have more PT1s in our process, we set TN to the largest process time constant, so the dominating process time constant. If you have only one, TN should be set to T. So um, first step, selection. One of possible selections. That is not the only selection method we, uh, we know. And uh, later in this lecture you will uh, you will learn uh, another, a second selection method for, for the team. Step, selection method uh, of TN is called pole compensation. Pole compensation. A very important name because this method is used in many, many applications. You should know what this is. I will explain. Uh, in the next step. Okay, pole compensation means, in other words, I said Tn is equal to the process time constant dominating dominating uh, time constant if more pt1 in process. Uh, later we, we will see a uh, process simplified with one PT1 is a not very good uh, process model identification. A uh, better step is we take two PT1s. Uh, then uh, pole combination means Tn is the largest one, the dominating time constant. Okay, in our case, then Tn is 10 seconds. Uh, now I show you uh, what uh, the reason for the name pole compensation. 
uh, because now I want to show you um, that you can calculate the closed loop first step reference transfer function reference reference transfer function which is f index w because this is a reference input is what happens with my speed output frequency function if we change the a desired value, uh, the set value of my speed. Now that is uh, described in the reference transfer function, and this reference transfer function describes the closed loop behavior. If you have a change here, what is the reaction of this? Yeah? If you have here a step function, we get here the reference step response, which is uh, soon in some minutes um, can be discussed and you can understand what happens with my. A speed control system. You should know in, in Germany, I think in Europe, this is not actually uh, the task of a cruise control system. Normally, a cruise control system should have a constant set uh, set value, and we want to have a constant uh, speed output, independent of disturbances which uh, have influence to my car behavior, like. Um, gradient of street and storm uh, which change the uh, the air friction and other other disturbances uh, i think uh, the the possibility to set the the z value from zero to a desired value let's say 50 kilometers per hour is normally not uh, supported in cruise control systems in typical cars yeah uh, but of course, we want to think about if this is possible. What happens with my system? Uh, let's calculate the reference transfer function in our situation, because this can be done with our pre-knowledge. We know the transfer function of uh, my controller. Let's call this F C. We know the, the system dynamics F P. And we know this is a closed loop system with a negative feedback, so we can use our uh, feedback reduction rule, which can be written as FC times FP divided by 1 plus negative feedback, a plus sign here, plus the product of FC times FP. This is the way we have learned to solve the discussion of a closed loop system behavior. This is a closed loop reference transfer function. Now we put our functions here, uh, our PT1 and our uh, PI system function into this expression and get the following uh, result. FC is KC1 plus PTN divided by PTN multiplied by the process transfer function 1 plus pt and here 1 plus um, c above now so you see this is exactly a copy of this uh, note with my pole compensation if tn is t then this quantity is identical to this quantity and now you can see this is a description of a zero in my um, system this in pole conversation case can be eliminated the pole of the process yeah this defines the pole of the process this is a zero of the controller and with this choice this pole compensation i can compensate this pole of the process with a zero of my controller. Compensation means pole el elimination. We can also say pole elimination method. Uh, so now yeah, you see first this pole, which makes a delay, which makes a system slow, can be eliminated with a zero of my controller. Uh, furthermore, this gives simple mathematical results. So we 
can now write the resulting um, rest of the function. Okay, you see k divided by ptn, the numerator divided by 1 plus, and now in the denominator I do the same, of course, kc, k divided by ptn. So after multiplying a numerator and denominator with ptn, I get kck divided by ptn plus kck. So we get a very simple reference transfer function, which is a first order simple function. Yeah? First order simple function. Uh, we want, of course, to analyze now this, this uh, closed loop behavior with the following question. Uh, can I now predict the behavior of this system by changing W, the reference behavior? Can I predict what happens with the speed? Yes, of course, because this function describes any reaction, any response of my speed depending on the change of my desired value. This contains all information. Uh, furthermore, I can identify this as a uh, yeah, what is this for a system? I go back to um, the um, workbook and you see we have a first order system with a constant, go back, a constant in the numerator and a first order system in the denominator. Um, constant in the numerator, no denominator, constant numerator, first order function in the denominator. So you see this reference transfer function looks exactly like a PT1. If you go deeper, you will see uh, the structure of the polynomial functions are different. So this is really a PT1. Yeah. Uh, now you can, of course, ask uh, with some critical uh, background, uh, okay, my car behaves like a pt1 now i buy a controller i install a connection to the motor and read out the tachometer uh, add here the subtractor and the result is again a pt1 what is the advantage wait wait for some seconds and you will see the advantage is great yeah the type is unchanged but the parameters of the type are different and much more much better than before um, first of course I want to uh, yeah, copy results from line 2 this is only possible if the form of the transfer function is normalized normalized means here the in the sum of polynomial functions in my my normalized version or the normalized version of this page is always in a sum if there is a p that parameter without a p is one yeah you see there is a one plus tp one plus uh, anything times p plus anything times p squared plus anything times p to the power of three the one with p to the power of zero is normalized to one then if this is true i can make a coefficient comparison and I can copy uh, results from this table. So first I have to normalize the function. Normalize. That means this uh, parameter must be uh, converted to 1 by division of this parameter. So uh, my reference transfer function unchanged but adapted to my desire is I have to divide both numerator and domain denominator with kck and get a 1 in the numerator kck divided by kck is 1 uh, this becomes a 1 that's my goal to normalize uh, but here of course the p also has to be divided by kck tn divided by kck um, you can say, okay, uh, if you compare this with a standard PT1, the numerator 
parameter is my new k, and the coefficient of the p is my new time constant. So we can say, okay, this is that what I can call kw, a new k, kw is 1, and this is a new time constant, let's call this tw. Yeah, w coming from, we are talking about reference behavior. Uh, so we have now two new parameters. Of closed loop system of the closed loop. KW is one and TW is TN divided by KCK. Um, <clears throat> let's uh, first now discuss what happens or how, how can I use this function. For example, I uh, know if there is a change, what happens with V. Uh, and what, of course, we can do is now calculate if this is a step function. The worst case change of a desired value is with a step. Of course, we can change uh, W value slowly, but the, the fastest change which is possible is a step function, and then this will be the step response. We can say now, Calculate step response. Calculate step response of my cruise control system. Of cruise control. That means, <coughs> okay, in the input, no, it's not anymore the power input, but the W input. And I want to start from zero and switch my desired value to um, a W0 value, which should be simply, say, 50 kilometers per hour. The highest speed in town. So this is my, my in Germany, we can say, Cavalier start. Yeah? Uh, if you're standing in traffic, traffic light, uh, and then in that moment where the traffic light switches from red to green, you just switch on your desired value to 50 kilometers per hour. And the reaction, we will see the reaction of my car then will be what curve? That's the question. The reaction will be the step response of this system. Step function at the input, the step response of my system, and the step response is described with a PT1 uh, signal, so we have a final value. And we have zero speed at the beginning, and then step response of the PT1 can be constructed with our tangent method. We reach sometimes a final value, and we can think about the size of the final value and think about the time of the reaction of my car. <clears throat> okay, I think in the next video I give the solution uh, and tell you that this is a rather nice uh, response.